it's Jen Suzuki, and I'm in the industry. I meet some of the greatest leaders out there, dealer execs, dealers, GMs, and I'm bringing them in the studio to talk to me about what's making their business pop, what's accelerating their growth. I'm sharing my own personal strategies for your sales team, so I'm ready to get after it. Are you? Well, welcome back, listeners. I'm pumped to bring back Len Short. He's the CEO and founder of Lotlinks, and he has got this great thing going on over that lot links. They're always looking at data and they have been on the AI game for a long time. I would like to say OGs in internet marketing. And, um, and anyways, I just want to put this out here because I've got Len here today and he has been sifting through, sorting through all sorts of data and going to share with us some of the findings, things that we can look out for in 2024, dealers and managers. It's important to know what's happening and what's trending. And a lot of times we don't don't get to see the data like Len does and his team. And so I am anxious to hear what is occurring so we can get ahead of it, so we can be aware of it. So, you know, we got a game plan and everything. So welcome, Len. Well, glad to be here. Always happy to, to spend some time talking to you. And we got an NADA right around the corner. We are scrambling here, getting all of our, <laughs> you know, ducks in a row. We've got a big big presence this year. Um, it grows every year. Finally, I think we have a great location. That was the last thing to tick off was a, you know, we had a great booth, but you know, okay. But we hung in there and I guess we're OGs, right? We started to get some seniority in the the whole NADA layout. So that's I'm, good. I'm so happy to hear that. You guys deserve it. I mean, uh, it's a, uh... I think it's always interesting when people pioneer something and then they get a chance to evolve with it and grow it. And then you also have the space to be able to show it off, particularly at, you know, the, the automotive's biggest event of the year. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody goes, you know, I always find NADA is kind of what they call in Hollywood, a plot point. You know, mm -hmm. you watch a movie, there's the beginning and then something happens and it changes the direct <laughs> direction of the movie. That <laughs> NADA is our plot point. You know, everybody is sort of, goes but then they all walk out in a new direction talking about the same thing it's where sort of ideas converge mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. i mm -hmm. i felt it every year you know and um so anyway we're we, we use it as the plot point of our year you know we don't mm -hmm. have a fiscal year we have the nada year you know it's, uh, <laughs> it's either the end of the beginning i don't know it's the end of a lot of work and it's the beginning of you know the next year so i'm looking forward to it well, I, people always ask me, you know, who should I go and see? And you guys have been such advocates of me, such big supporters of this podcast, allowing everybody in the automotive industry to listen to industry leaders and subject matter experts and people that are leading change. And certainly I appreciate it. And I hope that they're going to go and check and see what you guys got going on. I know you guys are going to unveil some new stuff and I'll be there too on stage doing some live podcasts. So with that being said, tell me about some of the key predictions that you're seeing trend for 2024? What can we expect in the upcoming year? Things that you're sort of got a mindful eye on. You've been a car guy for many, many, many years. Eh, people don't know this, but you started off selling cars. I'll just throw that in there. <laughs> I did, I did but, a long time ago. You know, when you got somebody that's got a passion and a love for the business and created tools for dealers to make money and be more efficient, I just got to know, what do you know? Yeah, I in a nutshell, it's a price sensitive market. Okay. You know, we've had dealers um, saying, hey, I'm marked down just like everybody else. You know, I'm at market, I'm discounting my new, you know, so on. And then they're, you know, they're struggling. They're not keeping up with the guy, you know, down the road, only to find that they were just holding a higher composition of built up Silverados, for instance. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, yeah, the same markdown, but a higher net price. And consumers today are, you know, very, very savvy. They know, as a guy once said to me, hey, they know more about my inventory than I do. By the time they come in here, they've shopped everything. They know what's going on. Definitely. And, you know, right now, and you can appreciate it, right? <laughs> Inflation has been a burden for the average working household. The average working household buys 98% of the cars, right? You know, and, and you know, I, I heard from an expert, a guy that you and I know, and I know we both respect, uh, mm -hmm. who spends a lot of time around leads. We had a very interesting um, lead product that we'd engineered mm -hmm. with our partners and we were piloting it with some of the most sophisticated BDC players in the, in the country and it was killing it. 
I mean, you know, hmm. 60% meeting set rates, really nice. And then in October, it just started to slow down, mm -hmm. fall off. And, you know, we were digging into it. Nothing changed about the lead. You know what changed? The consumer. Yeah, they were telling me, hey, we're up, you know, a new car lead closes 45 days, sometimes a little bit longer. That was the average. It's now almost double. It's a big decision and people are really scrutinizing it. And it's a price sensitive market. So, you know, the most important thing is to, is to understand that. That's putting a lot of pressure on margins, right? Mm -hmm. It's slowing down. We're starting to see inventory sort of build. Things are selling slower. You know, you're starting to get, you know, back to what one mm -hmm. friend of mine, he owns 27 stores, was saying, back to normal. Because mm -hmm. everybody who's worked for me, they've never seen normal. You know, that that's the normal car That's business. a true. <laughs> very, very competitive. And the the disciplined dealers tend to prosper. I mean, we're going to have a good year. It's going to be, you know, they say 15, 15 and a half SAR. No. Mm -hmm. Is that what they're saying? You know, I think it's mm -hmm. that yep. anything over 14 and a half is a good solid car business. There's money to be made, but, mm -hmm. but by the disciplined players, by the aggressive mm -hmm. and disciplined players. What we see in these contracting markets is those dealerships prosper at the expense of the ones who are less disciplined. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, so times are good. Everybody's doing well. Times get, you know, a little bit more competitive and then the good guys break up and then the not so good end up falling further behind. And so we see sort of a separation in the marketplace, really tight, well operated groups doing really well. And then a lot of people, you know, saying what happened? <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. What mm -hmm. happened? <laughs> All mm -hmm. of a sudden it's not as easy as it was. And uh, so discipline is, is um, I think, the order of the day. You and I grew so up, me, the, you know, we know what we know what discipline operators do. Now they got to get back to that. So. And 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 just for clarity, how would you describe what a discipline dealer is doing in relation to this? You know, the most, you know, back when I was in the business, you were paying a lot of attention attention to what you were holding over. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, your franchise and your marketing stack will deliver to what you sell. So say you're a 200 unit store. That's great. You sell 200 units. Maybe you're up mm -hmm. a little bit, maybe you're down a little bit. But, you know, and how you're doing versus competition is crucial in that the market may be up or down. You know, you want to be up versus the competition. Mm -hmm. Right. So but but now what we're seeing is more and more stuff carrying over. And it's the carryover inventory that really sort of pulls the dealership down, especially, you know, with interest rates high. Now, foreign mm -hmm. costs are a real issue, mm -hmm. you know, every day costs. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so a lot of the discipline around, you know, it starts at the beginning, what you're buying. You know, a dealer does well when he's stocked right and priced right. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. he's got a good franchise, stocked right, priced right. That stuff moves. And then he's got to work on the stuff that's not moving on time. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, that's discipline dealers. Now, a lot of dealers have gotten too comfortable with the market sort of, you know, bailing them out. Yeah. Right? I mean, they make mm -hmm. the wrong decision at auction. It doesn't go mm -hmm. so well. They mark it down. But, you know, somebody comes along. Now they're getting buy it. punished. Yeah, they're getting punished on those. those now they're buyers. holding. Yeah. <laughs> And yeah. so it's, you know, so that's what I mean by discipline. You start you start playing defense, mm -hmm. right? You know, everybody's been on the offense side, right? You know, throwing long, you know, bombs, passes, going for the big numbers, you know, and now, you know, you got to play defense because it's the, it's a holdover carryover inventory that's going to, you know, pull you down and, and making sure that, you know, you're stocking right, you're pressing right from day one. You're a lot more disciplined about price moves. I see dealers mm. habitually wait too long and yes. then mark down too much, yeah. you know, and, and if they if they could see what we could see in the data that, hey, every price move is what generates interest in the car. Mm -hmm. You know, so if you're going to mark it down $1,000, you know, you're better off marking it down 500 and then 500 again, rather than mm -hmm. waiting, you know, 35 days and then hitting it hard. You know, and so a lot of times markdowns have been the strategy to clear, and that is a tough road, uh, a mm -hmm. road to hoe. You know, it's mm -hmm. a it's a tough mm -hmm. uh, tough road, and so dealers got to get disciplined about that. Um, and we're you know we're very focused on using machine technologies to predict 
-hmm. You know, if I told you, you won't believe it, but it's true. Mm -hmm. My machines can predict on day zero within three days when a car is going to sell and what it's going to sell for. So it wow. can predict what's going to be the risk. Mm -hmm. What if you know what's going to be a problem up front? <laughs> you know, that's a so that we're trying to teach dealers, listen, let's identify the risk inventory, the stuff that later on you're going to be, you know, keep your eye on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then let's get let's get mm -hmm. on that to make sure that, you know, we carry forward demand. You maybe you know, move your investment forward in that car rather mm -hmm. than taking it at markdown, you know, go find incremental net new buyers for your dealership and start moving that inventory in time. When you do that, all boats rise, right? You start to push up your volumes, you push up your margins. And, you know, that's what we've been preaching. And what we find is that is a very uh, compelling conversation to a disciplined operator. That's how they think. And when we can bring technology and tools to how they, you know, they've learned to operate a dealership, it just goes very well. It's it's complicated when somebody says, hey, I was doing great. And all of a sudden, I don't know what happened, you mm -hmm. know, and mm -hmm. You know, and then you've got to you've got to sort of, you know, work on them on some of the fundamentals. You know, and I don't mean that with any disrespect. I mean, uh, dealers are the most resilient business people on earth. Mm -hmm. They, you know, they'll find a way. But we're in this shifting market, and they're starting to have to kind of shift their approach. And that's always, you know, it's always complicated, right? You, some people do it more naturally. And some people take a little bit longer to kind of realize the market they're in. So. Yeah. Well, everybody's having to kind of sit up and uh, rethink their strategy and remember some of the core fundamentals that got us through some of the tougher times and also how we used to operate. I mean, a lot of times, you know, in the in the last couple of years, every, I would say from a lot of people, they just changed their entire way of thinking when it came yeah. to the inventory. And it's just like the salespeople, too. You know, they changed the way that they thought about the sales process. Well, there wasn't really a sales process. It was like order, you know, and, yeah. and we're still and we're all still trying to come out of this um, old way of thinking and reset, refresh, and also at the same time be thinking, you know what, we don't have to do it the exact same way. And why would we? We have new tools. We have new technology to leverage and our technology is getting better and better. So now we have to train ourselves to look at maybe data differently or even the way that uh, we approach, you know, what benchmarks mean, you know, holding cars for, uh, you know, certain terms. I mean, we could get away with it before, but now it's like they're not moving as fast and they're sitting there and no. you're paying money. Them. And, and, and as you mentioned something about being able to predict uh, what the market's going to do, uh, th that's, that's interesting to me because a lot of times um, people will buy software, they'll buy tools, buy all these systems and stuff, and then they don't know how to use them and they can't really see the benefit. Uh, if you were to target something that you see that dealers are not using or leveraging that can really save them on efficiency and money and the way that they buy and the way that they sell, uh, what would it be? What's the thing that they should really it, be looking at? It, it truly is machine learning. We don't use the AI word around here because everybody's banning it about. Everybody thinks they have it. It's, <laughs> you know, it's uh, so I, I try to stay away from that term. But if you have, you know, true data science, okay. a proprietary big data set, which is okay. what we built everything on. And, you know, we were lucky. We, my partner was originally Canadian. That was a big shot in San Francisco. And then before that at Microsoft, you know, and he wanted to get, he, when we started a company in San Francisco, he wanted to get back to Canada. And he convinced me, listen, everybody thinks they're above average in San Francisco. There's some great technologists there, but let's get out yeah. of here. That's not where we want to be. So we happen to be up there in Toronto and the University of Toronto, go Wikipedia, Wikipedia machine learning, and you'll see University of Toronto is where, you know, some of the seminal work was done and we happened to bring in a couple of adjunct professors okay. into our team who taught us this before mm. anybody was talking mm -hmm. about it. Mm -hmm. and and you know we were and, and we couldn't really say much because nobody even really you know they kind of thought it was all noise but here's the thing about ai i i, I hope by now your average dealer has gone to chat gtp and played yeah, like, hey, I write me, so. uh, <laughs> write me an ad for my store and watch what it exactly. does. What they don't understand, I think the average person thinks, well, it's just sort of cutting, cutting and pasting from stuff that's out there on the internet. And that's not how it works. Hmm. It's similar to if you ask the average person, how does a plane fly? They they think it somehow glides across <laughs> the air, it gets pushed up. But really, the way a plane flies is through a vacuum, right? It creates a vacuum and it gets actually pulled up. 
it's a hard concept unless you're a you know physicist you understand those things so what 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 chat gpt and all ai does is it predicts so when mm -hmm. chat gpt writes you your resume mm -hmm. it's not cutting and pasting your resume it's predicting word by word what's the next right word mm. you give it a problem and then it does this prediction and then when you read it oh my god it's a beautifully written paragraph that is better than i could have done myself yes and but it was literally prediction you know taking the question and predicting word by word the correct answer so precisely hmm. that it's grammatically correct and, and compelling mm -hmm. so this is a concept that's hard for people they, they don't know like how could how could you predict and i tell mm -hmm. them you predict every single day you've been selling cars for 30 years when you walk on a yeah. lot you predict what to say to those people mm -hmm. you've had you have years of experience you'll you size right. them up glance at them and you kind of know what to say that's prediction you're yeah. you didn't you know and so that's what a machine is doing it's using that mm -hmm. massive experience set to to like do this very complicated equation and predict what to do so when we say we can predict mm -hmm. how long a car is going to sell it's actually when you've got the you know real science real mm -hmm. technology and most importantly, a real data set, we can. Mm -hmm. And that's what dealers are going to realize that this will be the most profound thing that that affects their operations because the principles don't change. But when mm -hmm. you have a tool that can can predict, I mean, frankly, a good car guy can. I've had owners walk in and do a lot. I walk in with him, he's like, he's looking over the inventory going, uh, you know, <laughs> why the hell do they buy these? He knows. He knows mm -hmm. it's not how long it's going to take to sell through experience. Well, that's what machines can do rel relentlessly. And so when you use the, when you leverage that technology to go back to the basics, I think that's the brilliant combination, combination mm -hmm. by going back to the fundamentals of the business, but using new technology to make it better. That's, that's really where, you know, if I were a dealer, that's what I'd be trying to do, you know? It's, 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 it's looking at all of the data and looking yeah. at, marketing trends, industry trends, things that are changing and evolving. I mean, it's a lot of times you'll hear people be like, oh, it was like eight, you know, like 2018, 19, you know, when we were in like COVID, it was like, cause yeah. you know, th there was things that we could predict and we saw the outcomes and you know, there's all these different factors that are swarming that impact uh, what can happen ahead. And of course I can tell you, I use chat GPT every day. In fact, I just left my sales class where we talked about leveraging chat GPT and, uh, in sales process today, because it is really a uh, remarkable, um, yeah. And you know, everybody what, thinks that's, that's actually really cool. AI, you know, for the AI people, not so much, like yeah. it's, it's really slick and it's very usable. It's awesome. So it's great in terms of, you know, but it's, you know, anyway, it's, it's, uh, not to demean what they've done. They've done, you know, uh, great things, but, but, um, Listen, you know, I, I'm lucky I spend a lot of time with owners. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you, owners didn't get to be owners without being through one, two, three, maybe more downturns. Yes. And succeeding, right? Mm -hmm. They they were the ones mm -hmm. who figured out how to resilient. manage through the tough times, right? Yeah. And mm -hmm. what I've heard over and over again is like, listen, everybody who's working for me has been in this since it's been good. Mm. You know, it's like we used to say at Wall Street. You know, the old guys had seen some market crashes, but you know, all the new guys hadn't really seen that yet, you know? So I think what they, what the owners are, you know, increasingly pounding the table, they're pushing their staffs hard. Mm -hmm. See a lot of turnover, a lot of like, hey, we got to get better, but they're right. doing it because they know what it takes to make it through a, a more competitive market. Everybody's okay. got to toughen up, you know, that's, mm -hmm. that's the way it's going. And I think, you know, dealerships are putting a lot of pressure on their vendors because you know, I can guarantee you what worked last year or the mm -hmm. year before, it's not going to be the formula for success going forward. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not going to be able to fall back to what you what's been delivering it so far. And that's, you know, that's pressure. You know, you got to rethink your operations, rethink how you go to market. So you got to rethink your marketing. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It's uh, hey, when you if you think about it in a great market, you're just trying to grab as much as you can. Right. This is a different deal. Right. You got to, you, you, you know, the more now the OEM is giving you all the inventory, <laughs> loading you up on stuff, you know, and now you got to figure out how to, how to, you know, turn that profitably. I mean, I always remind dealers that, you know, there's a supply chain 
And the mm -hmm. dealer's role in the supply chain is to take inventory risk. The OEMs make it, right? They engineer it, they produce it. Yeah. But they they then push the risk of the of of actually you know market execution on the on the on the dealer. That's yeah. the dealer's role. They're that they're in the business of taking inventory risk and then discharging that risk. And it's how successfully and consistently they do that, you know, makes will will we'll determine whether they're a profitable, successful dealer or not. You know, and so we you'll hear us talk a lot about inventory risk. That's mm -hmm. what we're very focused on. And it's not a bad thing. It's just that listen, if you if you attack the problems first, it's amazing how the rest actually kind of works out. You know, so uh, as, as a as a famous friend of mine said, you know, in the he's a finance guy, and he was saying, you know, you watch the pennies, the dollars watch themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's uh, and and so spending more time looking at you know carryover, you know, risk mm -hmm. inventory, getting smarter mm -hmm. about acquisition, making sure you're always on point on pricing. You know, and a lot of dealers are missing that. They think they are, but you know, they're not, and that's that's causing them some real pain. In terms of volumes and sell through rates. So when you when you highlight these areas, right, as this is this is discipline dealer, these are the areas that you know we're obviously pinpointing to manage inventory effectively. You've got you've got you've got machine learning technology that's right. creating uh, reporting and data sets for dealers to look at regarding their market, their vehicles, the risk that they've got to look out for, as you mentioned. So what are the things that I should be looking at as if I'm a dealer, if I'm, if I'm utilizing your tool and I'm saying, all right, this is what, this is, this is what I got to put into my, into my store. This is why, what are they looking at and how are they using it? And what does it look like every day for them? What am I, re what's my reward? Yeah. If you, if you think about it, every decision is made at the VIN level on a dealership lot. You know, when you acquire it, stock it, price it, recon it, you know, it's all VIN specific decisions. I, I've walked onto a lot with a famous legendary dealer who I've gotten to know well, you know, 3,000 new units. And he's literally, I mean, this guy's a legend. And he's yeah. literally pointing out the incentive inventory. Like, you know, look six rows up, two over, the white one next to two black ones. That, you know, he he's very... VIN by VIN focus. That's what a great operator is. You know, they're they're mm -hmm. making individual VIN decisions. <clears throat> the thing about machines, machines can execute at a scale and frequency that that people can. Mm -hmm. Right? You, I mean, this car business is full of great operators, but you know, they take a day off. <laughs> they they go on vacation. They do make mistakes. You know, mm -hmm. I've had an owner tell me, "Hey, listen, I've got a legendary used car guy, but man." <laughs> He sold a Range Rover. He's been down in the last five auctions chasing the next Range Rover, and I needed him to stock, you know, other stuff. You know, so there's there's so we get our own personalities in the way of things. Machines mm -hmm. don't. They don't have any. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, they don't know. They don't care. They there's no emotional connection. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so what's great about it is not only is it surfacing a lot of really compelling views of what's going on and insights so if a de dealers can make better you know strategic decisions about their yeah. business but it's also executing their will you say listen i want to go for gross or i want to go for volume, volume or i want to go for you know uh, i mean i need to take my my turn rate up in mm -hmm. my used inventory you tell the machine mm -hmm. to do it it will do it without emotion without taking a break without a you know ever missing a beat and that's you know it's nice to have that kind of reliability and mm -hmm. so this this you know i know that technologists come on they talk about the future and it's hard to sometimes <laughs> believe it you know and you're like yeah right I, you know whatever but i'm telling you this is the revolution that's playing out now mm -hmm. and people are going to see you know I, i'll tell you a story i was dealing with our law firm and we have you know a very white shoe law firm one of the you know, senior guys, all friend of mine. Mm -hmm. So they're thousands of dollars an hour. And we were dealing with, you know, sort of reconfiguring our corporate structure. Okay. And I'm trying to get an answer from them on a specific issue. And I went and I couldn't really, I mean, here I got that, you know, these lawyers on the phone and they're, you know, I'm just seeing the clock ticking, you know, and I can't get a real straight answer from them. Yeah. You know, they want to go back and spend more time. <laughs> 
So I got off the phone with the chat GTP and I asked it a very, very- I knew you were gonna question. say this. <laughs> you know, and, and, and it fed back chapter and verse exactly what I needed. And not only did that, it did the calculations for me perfectly. Yes. And when I brought it back to the lawyers, I, they were like, where did you get this? They were convinced that I had stolen it from, you know, some, somebody. <laughs> and, and, and they could not imagine that a machine could do mm -hmm. their job at that level. Mm -hmm. so they think, you know, hey, listen, machine learning, that's going to be like Uber drivers and other people. Mm -hmm. It won't be my job. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's, it actually is, man. It, mm -hmm. can, it can write contracts and do lawyering like you would not believe. And so... Mm -hmm. This is coming. It's going to change every job in America, you know. And what what I tell my my people, my kids who join, you know, here, you know, young, you know, kids who are you know out of college and they want to make a career for themselves is is like, listen, you're either going to be riding this thing or you're going to be run over by it. And mm. you're, you know, thank God you joined us because you're in a really good position to ride it. But that's what that's what you're going to look back at this this change in technology and say. You know, hey, we were at a turning point. We really didn't even realize what was going on. A mm -hmm. lot of times, if you're old enough, you remember the beginning of the internet. A lot of people are like, "Ah, is this ever going to take off?" <laughs> right. Is this ever, you know? And look and, at us now. <laughs> yeah, look at us now. So <laughs> this is going to make, in terms of the economy, and and you know, it's going to make the internet look like a, you know, like like the telephone, like oh, big deal, you know. And I, you know, so. So I think that the smartest thing the dealers could do, they hear a lot about leveraging data and the importance of data mm -hmm. and the proprietary mm -hmm. data. They're getting a lot of education on that, but really they need to start paying attention to what are the machine learning tools, real mm -hmm. machine learning. Don't go, everybody who says they got it, you know. It's uh, going to be the NADA show hot button, AI. Yeah. I see what yeah. you're saying and I respect it. It's, it, you know, a lot of people throw that word around and everybody's going to try to uh, uh, own it and we do it, yeah. but it doesn't mean that it's being done uh, in a way that is useful, beneficial, or even um, For real. It's very easy to real. take somebody else's, you know, chat bot and slap it on top of your tool and say, and we have AI. AI. It's, it's a right. nothing. And so, yeah. you know, so this is, um, yeah, yeah, I, I agree. This is going to be, uh, you know, a hot button. And, you know, it's yet another thing where a dealer has to figure out who's real and who's not. Mm -hmm. Like they had to do with the internet, right? There are a lot of charlatans out there saying they had it and they could do it. And then, you know, and so that's, uh, you know, that's that's a challenge. But I don't want to get negative here. I just think, you know, this is, I, I just think, mark my words, if, if this mm -hmm. podcast lives in the, you know, in the ether five years from now, somebody went back and watched it and be like, you know, that guy, I didn't really <laughs> believe in that, but maybe he was on to something. So. Well, there's a lot to learn from it. And when, look, you guys, I say it all the time. You guys are the OGs here, you know, and that means something because if there's one thing I've learned from ChatGPT, and I just said this to my class today, I started using it about a year ago and um, and I learned something, maybe it was like on TikTok and it was like, ask ChatGPT to ask you questions about your role, um, you know, your your business, you know, the, the things that you're interested in so that it can start to get to know you better. And then it'll start right. serving up more custom and personalized data. So, and I have to tell you, I told my classes today, I think it's true because um, I don't know if it's true. I can't say it's just that I did it. I, I mean, I used to spend a half hour every week um, asking ChatGPT to ask me questions about my business and about, you know, uh, things that I'm doing. So it serves up information that's a lot more custom to to me. It, 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 and it's, it's really on point. It really is. And if there's one thing I've learned from it that could be, you know, something to, you know, to, 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 to say here is that when you've been around a long time and you've got all the right people that, uh, you know, are working on enhancing your product and that you've got machines that are looking at the data for periods of time, it only gets better. So the people yeah. that enter now that maybe try to do the same thing that you're doing, there's just no way they could produce the same information or know the market. The system has to, the machines have to know the market. They're going to know that, you know, for as long as, you know, we've known each other. So, yeah. you know, you've got a long-term relationship. Yeah, we've been, we've been yeah, aggregating. Wow. Yeah. We've been aggregating for 14 years literally everything that's happened before every car and all the stuff even the weather that it sat under i mean this massive data set of, of what affected the 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 disposition of this i was talking to my son who's you know a good kid and he, he works he's on the google ai enterprise uh -huh. team you know like uh -huh. you know, how they're transforming their business uh -huh. and you know he, he kind of knows what you know a little bit about what i'm doing and we were talking about something he said dad guard your data with your life. Mm 
-hmm. the rest essentially open source mm -hmm. right it's it, you know it's mm -hmm. accelerating very quickly so it's going to mm -hmm. separate you know mm -hmm. the the true enterprises from the also rans is the proprietary data that's really mm -hmm. and dealers have proprietary data around their their stores mm -hmm. that's why the move to cdps is you know important for them you know but but that's only a, a small little droplet in an ocean of what affects the car business and mm -hmm. you know so so that's uh, uh you know data is the key and that yeah. data is 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 a stubborn thing it, it takes a lot of patience and a lot of expertise to collect and organize in a way that it's mm -hmm. useful mm -hmm. very hard if it were easy everybody would be doing it it's not and you know and that's and so you get to a point where, hey, listen, so I could literally give people the code, but they couldn't, they couldn't even come close to what we do without the data. Hmm. You know, so that's the. Uh, again, we're kind of going down. A, what, what I did want to say about the, all these, you know, I talk a lot about machines, but the great thing about it is, is it frees the human beings. Hmm. So much of the car business is a human mm -hmm. relationship business. Mm -hmm. It is. It's. It's humans making really good decisions and having good reactions to customers and the marketplace and so on. And so this isn't, you know, this is a, this frees up people to do what's important. You know, you're using chat GTP. It's not taking over your job. It's making you more, more effective than what you do. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and that's how you should look at it. Not as something scary that's going to replace no. them, but something that's really going to accelerate them. And that, you know, I think a lot of car dealers probably have that said to themselves, man, I wish I could just get back to the car business. Yeah. I'm so distracted with all this other stuff. I'd like to be able to just get back to the car business. Well, maybe that's possible. Well, I think um, also, you know, the uh, takeaway here too is to be open-minded to trying, you know, leveraging technology that's been around for some for some time. Uh, yeah. In this particular case, you know, just being able to collect for so long, uh, you know, it, some people have been scared to try stuff like this. But I think that, you know, ChatGPT coming out really opened the minds of a lot of people, and I think people are embracing new technology. They're looking for it, and in fact, I think that'll that'll that's one of the probably the biggest things I've been most interested in uh, in the last year is how can we do things better? How can we do things faster? How, 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 what's available to me? And just knowing is half the battle going out there and seeing, you know, how I can make my business more efficient. I mean, that's the name of the game because as you mentioned, well, look, is it with people, machines, it doesn't matter. Somebody out there is going to do it better. You know, so yeah. if, if you're on top of it and uh, and you know what's available out there and you can progress your business by making it more efficient, I mean, that's what we got to do. And uh, and, and, and that's I'd what I mean now, by the aggressive, the aggressive yeah. operators. Right. That's it. Yeah. That's sort of the there's a great clip. I'll send it to you of Joe Walsh, okay. who is the legendary, mm -hmm. you know, member of the Eagles, you know, and mm -hmm. somebody, you know, this is recent. Somebody asked him about AI and he's like, well, it's not music. It can't trash a hotel room. It can't throw a TV off the balcony and land right in the center of the pool. Until AI can trash a hotel, a hotel room, then I'll pay attention to it, you know? So there's that. I mean, that's skepticism is a, mm -hmm. you know, is, is an approach. But yeah. the ones who were skeptic, skeptical about the internet fell behind. The ones who were skeptical yeah, and, about this are going to fall behind. So I, I think you've, you've got to temper you know, skepticism with a little bit of, as you say, open mind mindedness, you Take know, a risk. and um, yeah. And, and, you know, and, and be careful about who you, who you trust. Yeah. You know, there's, it's, it's easy to, it's easy to make claims. <laughs> you know? we've, we've seen many of them. I've seen many yeah. of them. And I agree. That's the thing to yeah. keep your mindful eye on, you know, um, especially as you go to NADA show this year, there's a, yeah. there's a lot of out there to look at but um I, I i love what you're saying i love what you guys do and i can't wait to see you guys there and i know you guys are going to unveil some new stuff as usual um but most importantly i think it's good to just get a demo check it out see what this yeah. is you know and, hey, you know uh, what we have all this data and you know people often don't realize this i my philosophy is let's share it let's let's give it to the dealers and let them start okay. to you know, play with this. So, so we've got some tools that will give them amazing value in their day-to-day -day business for absolutely free. And so, you know, I always encourage dealers like, hey, listen, just go to our site and download this, start playing with it. You know, you'll see what's behind this. 
And it's not that's not a sales pitch. I'm not you know we're not going to have people jump all over them and try to sell them. But you know <laughs> um, if they're if they want to know what this is, uh -huh. come by you know come by the booth. We'll we'll, we'll take you for a bit of a tour. We'll we'll give you some tools so you can start to see what the machine knows, and you know you make your own decision about whether that might be useful or not. You know, love it. So yeah, well I'll put the link in the show notes too. All right. Yeah. You know, um, anyway, so good to see you. I think, listen, I think uh, car dealers are going to find a way of, of doing well. I think we're in a change of expectations now, right now. Mm. So a lot of, you know, there's a lot of angst, but it'll settle down. Consumer confidence is back up a little bit. So maybe that mm -hmm. helps a little bit, mm -hmm. um, you know, the rates but, are coming down and some manufacturers are offering zero percent. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of stuff that helps, you know, consumers over the hump, but don't underestimate, you know, how inflation took a bite out of people's ability to buy, yeah. you know, and that is, you know, they say inflation is coming down, but it's not going, it's not going backwards, you know, yeah. so a lot of households, you know, it, it changed the equation and, and dealers have to really understand that's, that's the market they're operating in. So. Great. Thank you for the. Sites as usual, and uh, and I can't wait to see you guys next week. Yeah, right, good to see you. And, and I'm looking forward to it. So, all right. All right. Well, thanks, thanks for your time. Your it's time. good to see you again. Right. Same. Thanks. Bye. Thanks, Len. If you like these episodes and my sales game techniques, you should snatch up our latest dealer education program I'm hosting. It's called Jen's Remote Classes, and it's a one-hour, once-a-week class with me alongside other dealerships all pursuing the same end game to achieve top 10% status in your dealership. For more info, hit me up. All my contact info is in the show notes. I want to hear from you. And follow Dealer Talk with Jen Suzuki right now to get notified when episodes like this one drop. This is Jen on the podcast Dealer Talk with Jen Suzuki. See ya!